few years ago, I was diagnosed with a permanent progressive neurological degenerative disease. And I decided that the best way for me to combat that was to pursue a lifelong dream of playing the bass because this will do a lot for my brain health and my happiness. But trying to learn all the patterns was really overwhelming. And I was so confused as to how all these patterns were connected until one day I saw this pattern in music and on my bass fretboard. So this video is my attempt to draw it out and explain it to you guys in hopes that it might help someone else overcome their struggles assimilating all the various patterns that make up music theory into one cohesive idea. This is a movable pattern and you use it to hold various ways of labeling the 12 tones and then shifting those patterns on top of each other so that you can see the patterns that make up music theory like the circle of fifths which is plainly readable off the fretboard of a bass. First, we're going to look at the component shapes of the Van Ray device. There are three shapes that you're seeing right now on the screen, and they repeat in a regular, predictable way. The lines I chose to emphasize make the repetition easy to hold in your mind in a small space and give you plenty of area to work out fingerings, etc., or to hold finger patterns. First, you're going to want to really understand how the pattern repeats and how the notes in each shape remain the same no matter where you play that shape on the fretboard. You're just playing different octaves of the same notes. First, we're going to memorize the fretboard, and this should make this really obvious. So the first thing you want to do is practice the Van Ray device in the A minor or C major position which puts the circle directly over the B, C, E, and F. You're going to use this shape of four frets in a two by two box that we draw a circle around to emphasize because of it's important in the repetition of the pattern. And you're going to memorize where the notes are in relation to the dots on the fretboard. You're going to work with this pattern until you can jump to any of the notes at will. And then that you can play all of them even without looking. And while you're doing this, think about how the B and the E are part of the square and the C and the F are part of the little box, the two by two placeholder that we use to keep the big box organized on the fretboard, the square in its pattern. Now, when you're using the device on the guitar, you need to shift it one fret toward the bridge on the B and the high E strings because the B is tuned to a minor, major third, sorry. Um, but you can still use the device just when you cross that line, you need to make that shift. Next, you're going to really focus on the square of the device, the big box, the three by three square. And here in a minor C major position, you're going to add three more notes to your memorization 
so that you can learn where all of the white keys on the piano are located on the fretboard by heart so that you can jump to any of them without thinking about it. The ones you didn't learn are the black keys, which are indicated by sharps and flats. Here you can see the piano keyboard drawn onto a bass clef, which helped me learn how to sight read more easily. This helps you understand why the black keys are shown with sharps and flats. Next, we're gonna look at diatonic scales. We already played the diatonic scale pattern when we were memorizing the fretboard in a minor C major position, but you can shift the device and place the roots for the desired scale on whatever note you want and follow the pattern up or down the fretboard in any direction to play the desired key. The device holds every fingering pattern that you've ever learned for diatonic scales if you just take a little time to look for them. Once you understand how the device shows diatonic scales, it's time to tackle the modes, which are simply starting the diatonic scale pattern from a different route. I use the mnemonic Mad Philly to help me remember which scale degree or location in the Van Ray device pattern I need to start each mode on. Using the Van Ray device to hold pentatonic scales is really exciting because it gives us a way to reduce the pentatonic and the blues scales down to a tiny 3x3 three three shape that you can navigate all over the fretboard in any pentatonic and blues scale that you like. Simply remember where the major and minor and blues notes are once we move to the shifted square pattern for the pentatonics as you are about to see on the screen. First, we'll shift the major root up an octave, and then we'll shift the second, and notice that the minor root is already showing in our pattern. And this reveals a new three by three box with the root in the upper left corner for the major, the center, of the bridge side of the square for the minor and the center of the low edge of the square is the blues note. If you take the time to study the pattern, you'll notice that every pattern that you ever learned for pentatonics and blues scales is contained in this pattern. Forming harmonic and melodic minors is simple using the Van Ray device. I've added these symbols to help remember which degrees to shift. For the harmonic minor, you want to start on the minor root, the lower left of the 
square or big box and you want to shift the seventh degree a half a step higher. When you add one line across the double greater than symbol, it creates an H, which helps me remember H for harmonic and that I only need to shift one note. To create a melodic minor, you need to shift two notes. Again, starting on the minor root in the lower left of the square and following the pattern, this time shifting the sixth and the seventh degrees a half step higher. Traditionally, only on your way up the scale and naturalizing them on your way back down the scale. But you can use it however you want. Adding two lines to the single greater than to create the M shape helps for me remember that to create a melodic, I need to change two notes as pictured here. You can use the device to hold any scale pattern that you want, but I've only included markings to help us create the most common ones. I think the most exciting thing that I realized about the Van Ray device is that it's literally a circle of fifths. And once you have the fretboard memorized with it, you can use that pattern to literally read key signatures right off of the device. So by following the column down from the major root location through the notes and shifting the device, you'll see how the sharps show up in the diatonic scale pattern in the order of the circle of fifths. I'm sorry that my graphics don't fit perfectly in the grid of the device here, but I was a bit limited by the fact that I'm doing all of this on my iPhone with free apps. So I'm happy with the quality given all of that. Now I want you to notice the shortcut. If you read from the column down under the C, and you look at the column next to it, starting from the F sharp, you can simply read the number of sharps that you need for each key. And the sharps increase as you go down the column. G has one sharp, F sharp, D has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, A has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, D has four sharps, and so on. The same pattern also works for the flats, but this time you're gonna move from the C in the C major position, up the column, sliding the device over the notes to reveal the flats of each key signature. So as you notice, F has one flat, B flat, B flat has two flats, B flat and E flat, E flat has three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, and so on up the column. When you're using the device to read the flat key signatures, the key and the flats are in the same column. You're going to start with B flat and read up the column to one note past the key signature that you're looking for. So in this diagram, you can see that you can literally just count up or down from the C how many sharps or flats so that when you look at a key signature and see sharps or flats on the key signature, you can look down at the device as a tattoo on my arm in my case and see exactly what key that is by how many sharps or flats it has and you can read what those sharps and flats are by reading the correct sharps and flats from the corresponding column on the device using A minor C major note position. Just like the device shows us the circle of fifths, it also literally shows us the cycle of fourths or fifths. When we label the scale degrees with their Roman numerals or their Arabic numbers, it shows us all of the patterns of the chord progressions. For example, here's the double L pattern that many people have pointed out. 
And here you see the literal cycle of fifths in the column written out four, one, five, two, and so on. I've included some of the most popular chord progressions just for fun here because I thought somebody could maybe use it. The Van Ray device obviously shows us the fingering patterns for all of the chords that you could want. By simply looking at the scale degree that you want and skipping every other note through the diatonic scale, you can see various chord shapes in the device. And you can see how they share notes and are connected to each other or alternate ways to play them by studying the device. I also use the device to work backwards. When I'm watching someone, I'll note what pattern they're playing and then place it on the device, moving it around until I see where it fits in the scale pattern that I see them using to find out what scale degree they're on or what kind of chord they're playing or what kind of key they're playing. Here you can see a lot of my notes where I'm playing with the chord shapes to understand how the patterns of sounds fit together and work together and why they sound good. This slide is just a quick overview of intervals and a little bit about some ways to make navigating intervals a little easier using the patterns in the device and some very simple math. I get distracted and then I play around. Just do a bunch of editing to make sure I play all the only the right notes so you guys don't be complete assholes to me. Cause I know how some of you are. Don't worry, you'll just get blocked. A little bit about me. I really only started playing the bass sort of seriously a couple years ago um, because I found out that I have a permanent and progressively neurodegenerative disease and I've always wanted to play the bass so it was a really great time to institute a little physical therapy, a little neurotherapy, playing some music. So I got the bass, started working on it and that is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. I'd like to credit Ari Cap and her course for helping me so much with music theory. And please, if you like what you see here, please feel free to use it and share it. Um, if you want to donate to my PayPal, there's probably a link in the description somewhere because um, with the chronic illness, it's very expensive to treat. I could use all the help I could get. But um, if you want to hire a teacher, Go hire Ari Cap and watch. And now the square.
thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for trying this out. And let me know if it helps you. I'd really be very curious to see if it were was helping other people as much as it helped me because uh, there's a lot of information to assimilate when you're doing music theory. And um, I already have a neurological problem. So getting it to come out of my fingers the way I'm thinking about it is another challenge on top of understanding it. So when I took away the problem of understanding it, when I saw this pattern, that's when it started coming out my fingers the way I wanted it to. All right.